I'm Dr. Bob Morgan, uh, one of the uh, uh, ambulatory vets at Luma Space and Equine Medical Center, and we're here to discuss Equine Dentistry 101. And um, there will be a quiz at the end, and the answer to the quiz is a question I'll pose now, and that is, why did the Maharishi refuse lidocaine when he was having his dental work done? That'll be later. Okay, so horses with dental problems may show some obvious signs. Uh, some of the obvious signs are things that we're all familiar with, dropping feed, difficulty chewing, drooling, uh, loss of body condition, they can't keep weight on, large undigested food particles in their manure, and then the performance ones like head tilting, fighting the bit, won't turn, won't stop, and worst of all, for most of us, is bucking. And then finally, the one that is really obvious is a foul odor from either the mouth or the nose. An annual oral exam is an important way to catch problems before they get to these obvious signs, because horses won't show these things early on, perhaps. Um, annual exams for dentistry have proven really important with humans, cats and dogs, and uh, that's the way we've moved with horses also. So what's so unique about the equine mouth? This slide is intended to show that horses have hypsodont teeth. That means they are constantly erupting as opposed to cats or dogs or humans. And you can see here the, all of the reserved tooth that's up in the skull. This is what's in the mouth. And on the upper and lower jaw in the younger horse, there's an, an inordinate amount of tooth that's up there that's just not visible. That keeps pushing out annually, making balancing the mouth really important. So how was dental work done previously? And on this slide, editing. on this slide, 1648 uh, photo, uh, painting of a horse being done kind of the way we were doing it in 1980 when I started. Here's the horse, here's somebody with a, probably a farrier rasp and some, just fighting with the horse. The horse doesn't look too happy. And uh, in 1980, we hadn't advanced really too much further than that. Um, and here's what we were doing then. Dental floats, we might have a speculum, not too many of these were used. And then here, right in person, are some of these instruments. This was kind of 1980 when I first started. Hand floats, one for a smaller mouth, one to get way in the back of the mouth, and then something to flush it out. The other thing that's unique about the equine mouth is its length and the fact that they can't open their mouth very much because of the way their jaw is hinged and because of the oral commissure. So that's about it. That's about what we can get the mouth in. So we need long instruments and we need ways to get back there and deal with these teeth. Okay, so move forward from 1980 to the present. What's happened in that time? Well, we have cell phones uh, and uh, digital x-ray, but we made some major advances in equine, the way equine dentist, dentistry is done. So um, we insist now on having the patient sedated. We have a trained assistant with us. We use almost exclusively motorized equipment and we have things like this, a dental stand. So the, the assistant or back in the old days, the client doesn't have to hold the head on the shoulder and we can control the patient with this and have it at the right height for the horse and for the person doing the, dentist, the dentistry. Here's how the table looks now with the equipment that we're using besides the stand. We have good headlamps so we can actually see what we're doing. The mouth is held open with a speculum. This is a McPherson speculum. There are other kinds. Uh, think of the concept of a dental mirror to actually look in the back of the mouth. Who thought of that? picks to pick some of the food away and look at it, and sedation, obviously very important. Horses do not like the noise. This is not painless or painful, but it is noisy and there's vibration. So this uh, power float set up has uh, interchangeable heads and we can get all the way in the back of the mouth, obviously, and this is actually less traumatic to teeth than the old hand floats where a strong person was working with a long handle and a strong upper body and actually doing more roughing up of the teeth in the inside of the mouth than these do where we have a spinning bit 
little diamond chips on it that is actually just touched to the tooth without a lot of force having Okay, so we've moved now from the past to the present, the way we're doing dentals, and uh, we'll go ahead in another segment and talk about some of the specific things we find in the mouth, but the answer to the quiz, why did the Maharishi refuse Novocaine in his dental exam? And it was because, obviously, he wanted to transcend dental medication.